Praise the Lord. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Pastor Wayne Voss, and this is the Tuesday Trumpet. Amen. On April the 23rd, 2024. Praise God. Another beautiful day. Another great day to tell someone about the love of God. It's all wrapped up in Jesus, who he is and what he did at Calvary. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I just want to go right to right ahead and go right into the word this morning. I'm going to be bringing a message to you from the book of Jeremiah. So uh, take your Bibles, choose a good King James Version, word for word translation. I prefer the King James. It's not hard if you study uh, the, the, the Bible. It's not hard to interpret or to understand. Amen. But you, we need to uh, be looking at a word for word translation. Amen. And uh, take notes, follow along. And judge everything I preach and teach based upon the word of God. Amen. And, um, and I can never stress how, how, you know, thrilled I am that you would join with me in this uh, simple broadcast uh, that we do, that I do here on, on Tuesday during the lunch hour where I'm still clinging to that old rugged cross. We're still fighting the good fight. We're still marching over here in the Delta. I'm, I'm still seated right here in front of this mason jar filled with uh, dogwood flowers. And uh, I just thank the Lord for all that he has done and uh, this great gospel, this great message of Jesus Christ and him crucified. And uh, we're marching on, believing God for great things that he did. And uh, the endurance the, that was going to be necessary to endure to the end, he's going to provide it all, but provided that we continue to cling to the cross. Amen. I want to, Lord laid this on my heart several days ago, and uh, let's look at, I'm going to begin Jeremiah chapter 2. And you just turn there, Jeremiah chapter 2. And... Uh, Maybe verse 29, possibly back up to verse 28, but right there somewhere. Jeremiah chapter 2 and uh, verse uh, 28. And, uh, but it, this is dealing, and Jeremiah, understand just a brief intro here as to what we're looking at and talking about. Jeremiah was, uh, was God's prophet, God's preacher, or God's minister. Uh, of that day and time, we're dealing here specifically with the, the, the land and the people in the region called Judah. And uh, the, the, but we find with Jeremiah, just as we did, his dealing with Israel and their backslidden state, we, we find a great parallel between him and his ministry and where we are today. What I present to you today is not just a mere history lesson about Jeremiah, not a mere history lesson about Israel or Judah or, or, or any of that, amen. What, what I bring to you today is for us, this is an example for us to understand hopefully more uh, about where we are today. And uh, so as always, uh, I will be tying this uh, to New Testament scriptures and the teachings, especially, uh, hopefully, of the Apostle Paul, amen, as he's the one that God revealed the meaning or understanding of the new covenant and uh, mainly the message of the cross and what all of that meant and what it means to us today, Amen. We, we certainly need a deeper and a greater understanding of that, but it won't come if we're not determined to camp out there and cling to the cross and, and, and put up our spiritual antennas and, and stretch our neck and allow our ears to hear the, the constant and persistent teaching and preaching of the message of the cross. That's the reason it's so important that we understand that those that are saying that, uh, you know, that we don't have to spend as much time as we do on the cross, that it's elementary and so on and so forth, and all of these excuses that's being uh, spoken to, in the body and to the body, amen, we need, we need to turn away from those. those, those that's vain instruction. And we, we, need to, we need to point our ears and open our hearts to what the Lord is saying through, through the message of the cross through this great gospel, because that is the gospel, Christ and him crucified. 
Amen. So, and then Jeremiah, just a beautiful uh, picture uh, of the man of God who's speaking, prophesying, and proclaiming the gospel to a people that's in a the state, but their their hearts are hardened. They 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 cared not to hear the words of Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah is often referred to as the the weeping prophet. He wept over the condition of the people. He uh, wept over the the, the um, uh, their rejection of the, the the voice of the Lord and what what the God was saying through him to the people, and to try to get them to turn and come back to the truth. And so he was a heart. He had a heart that was broken over the condition of the people. But yet, he was God's messenger for that day, that particular need, that time. Uh, he was God's voice. He was sent, raised up of the Lord to, to speak the things that he spoke. He spoke under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He was directed of the Lord to, to speak the things that he spoke without fear uh, of men or without favor toward men. He was... Uh, a representative of God, and he spoke, thus saith the Lord. And, and uh, only those, and you hear me say this repeatedly, and I will continue to repeat it, today in like fashion, only those that are presenting the gospel of the cross, the gospel of Christ, which is uh, the message of the cross, Christ and him crucified, are speaking uh, for God or speaking the testimony of God and what the Holy Spirit is saying. And God's never ever sent anyone to present anything other than the blood sacrifice of Christ on the cross, not just for interest in salvation, but for daily living, our sanctification, and all things that pertains to life in God. And as Paul never separated sanctification, living, uh, righteously, living godly. He never separated that apart from uh, justification. That was the gospel. We're justified by faith. We're sanctified by faith. And our growth and fruit bearing and all of that comes by faith in what Jesus did at the cross. His crucifixion and our crucifixion with him. Amen. He was crucified so we could be crucified. Praise God. That is the understanding that we must have in order to walk in the victorious life that Christ lived and walked in over the enemy and anything and everything that the enemy would use toward him, amen. Our victory is wrapped up in his victory on the cross and our faith is to remain there, amen, all the time, consistently and and, and, and knowingly that we, we must trust in the cross, the blood of the lamb, what Jesus did there to have victory over sin, over death, over hell, over the Satan and over in anything that he would use against us. Victory was purchased at Calvary's cross over every power and every principality. It's what the Bible teaches in Colossians chapter two in verse 15, and really throughout the entirety of the word of God. And the giant is brought down by that one rock that David threw and, and uh, pierced his forehead and brought him down. And uh, let's get to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter two, and uh, beginning in verse 28. Let's just start right there. But, he, but the Lord is speaking through Jeremiah to Judah, God's people, he said, but where are your gods that you have made for yourself? Let them arise if they can save you in the time of your trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a time coming. There's, I know that there's prosperity and preachers out there that preach quite different than the truth reveals to us, but there's a time of trouble at hand. And this time of trouble is going to be a time of separating the, the the goats from the sheep. And he said there saying, but where are your gods that you have made for yourself? So Judah just, they, they, they just made gods unto themselves. They, they, they made idols 
convenient idols. They made idols unto themselves. They made gods unto themselves. And we think, well, how could that possibly do? How could that possibly be when they, these people witnessed the great signs and miracles and wonders of God bringing them out of Egypt? They witnessed all of that. They witnessed the great uh, parting of the Red Sea and the great deliverance that God gave them. Well, this is really no different today. Amen. The, the, the great deliverance that God has given us through the understanding of the cross. Amen. There's, now we see a departure from that. And the church, the, the, the very body, the church, the blood-bought church is now making gods and idols unto themselves. And the most part, it's not little old statues of Buddha that been set in the corner or anything like that. Or, amen. The, the, it's men and ministries. Amen. And, it, and uh, one of the things that I see, the God that most is looking to is today, and listen to me carefully and don't take what I'm saying out of context and don't twist it. But, but the, the idol that the majority of the cross-preaching camp is looking to now is a packed house. Are you a packed house? Amen. We want, the, we, we want a packed house. We want a huge following. We want many people to follow us. And, and that's, that's the main thrust of the mind of, uh, of the, the, the people today and what is referred to as the church. They want a packed house. They want a huge following. And with that comes uh, full offering plates and that sort of thing. And all of this has been turned into an idol. And, and for the sake of, of achieving and, and, and making these idols of a packed house and a huge following, uh, the church has, is willing to trim the truth. The church is willing to... Um, uh, trim the truth in order to present what they refer to as love and unity when it's really a false love and it's a false unity. It's not the love of God. It's not the uh, the the unity that God has is raising up. God's unity is those that are gathered around the cross. Amen. True, the unifier is the cross. The the cross is what brings fellowship between us and, and a righteous, thrice holy God and, and fellowship among the body, amen. We're united by the blood of the Lamb. We're united by the cross. That is where you find true uh, God-established, God-given unity, amen. Anything other than that is concocted and, and manufactured in the, in the hearts and the mind of men for a huge following, Amen. The, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 6, and if you look a few verses up from that, amen, it, it'll explain what, what I'm saying. It, but 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and 6 says, Love rejoices not in iniquity. The love of God rejoices not in iniquity. And, and the word iniquity there means the sin. Amen. The sin, which is a departure from the faith. Love rejoices not in the sin, it rejoices not in the iniquity, amen, but rejoices in the truth, amen. Charity is mentioned a few verses that speaks of love, amen. So that's what it's saying there. Love rejoices not in iniquity, not in the sin, a departure from the faith, even for the sake of love, even for the sake of unity and bringing in many people, amen, the, the, the love of God does not rejoice in that. The love of God rejoices in the truth. And the truth is always the faith. And the faith is always, couple that with the truth, the faith. And it's always Christ in him crucified. That's where you find God rejoicing. That's where you find the true household of saints rejoicing. Amen. Around the altar of God, around the sacrifice. Amen. That's where you'll find unity. That's where you'll find harmony. There's no contention among those that, are, that are lock, have locked their arms around the cross if, if, and united in that great faith. If there's contention, there's something there that has entered in 
apart from faith alone and the cross alone, amen, whatever that might be. There's many different things that's been thrown in the pot in this final hour, amen, to, to cause the people to reject the, the exclusive message of the cross and to embrace whatever they've got their eyes looking to and their eyes are no longer, no longer single, looking to the exclusive message, looking to the cross alone, but their eyesight has been blurred and they're looking to other things. And the only thing that's going to happen out of that latest gentleman is shipwreck. There's going to be destruction. There's going to be loss of the soul. We have to guard against that. And uh, so, but Judah, as I, before I go any further, Judah, it's interesting, Judah means praise. And that's the people that Jeremiah is specifically ministering to at this point in time in the verses of scripture that I'll read in just a moment. But Judah means praise. But praise apart from faith in the cross, which is the means we are able to believe God, the only way we can believe God and, and enter into his will and have relationship with him is through the death of the cross. But praise, Judah means praise. But the only way that we're able to believe God is, and nothing is to believe God is through faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. But this, what we're seeing today on, on the church stage and platform, uh, we're seeing nothing more than what we saw with Elijah on Carmel when these false prophets would jump up and down on the altar and, and even cut themselves with knives and latchets till their own blood gushed out. You can find that First Kings chapter 18, verse 26 and 28. But, but the Bible says, but there was no answer. There was no voice, nor any to answer, nor any regarded any of that. In verse 29, and in like fashion during that day, and I know it seems like I, I moved quickly to something else, but I'm really not. Amen. No, no matter how desperate we are or the church and how exuberant the people are, it's only height, just like it was on that day in, in a flesh fest, apart from the cross where we worship there in, in truth and in spirit. It's, apart from that, our worship is nothing more than just a height, carnality. It's a flesh fest. It's a clap trap and it's a it's, it's all of that, and, and it's not worshiping God in truth and in spirit. The only way we can worship him in truth and in spirit is to be found clinging uh, to the cross. So we see in the, in, during the time of Jeremiah, Judah had forsaken the Lord, turned their backs to, unto God and worshiped idols, and their idols were given credit for their inheritance. But that they laid claim to, but trouble was just around the bend. And in their time of trouble, verse 27 says, they will say, arise and save us. So having understood that, let's look now back to verse 28. And, but it says, but where are your gods that you have made for yourselves? Let them arise if they can save you in the time of trouble. For according to the number of your cities are your gods, O Judah. It's an untold number of gods that you have set before you. And really, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's, like, it's quite like that today. The Bible says that deception is running rapid in this day and time. There's only one truth, one faith. There's only, there's only one object that God will honor, and that's having our faith exclusively in the message of the cross. And, and so uh, when, when we begin to look to other things, whatever that is, and we fix our minds upon it, we begin to trust in that. Whatever that is, it will become a breeding ground for all sorts of error and distractions 
just as it was in the time of Judah, just as it is today. The next thing you know, we open our door, we hand our microphone, we give our platform over to all sorts of things, word of faith, doctrine, over to them. Uh, new apostolic reformation over to um, humanistic psychology over to and that's just a very very short list but all of those things are holding hands and promoting some other uh, false doctrine or error that will soon be embraced when the people begin to look to something other than the exclusive message of the cross where you'll find victory over these things. Those that know the truth know who's telling the truth. When you leave that truth where your soul is anchored and your eyes open up to see correctly, amen, you begin to look to other things. You begin to take yourselves uh, other wives. You begin to influence by that uh, uh, that strange woman. You begin to succumb to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You open yourself up for all sorts of um, influences that we need not be influenced by. Amen. Our only influence should be coming from the preaching of the cross, the testimony of God, the power of God, and the wisdom of God that's all wrapped up in Calvary and what Jesus there did. And it's our responsibility to maintain our faith in the cross and the only thing that God will honor and work in. We consciously and knowingly, daily, all the time, have our faith anchored in the cross. That's, that's how we trust in him. Our trust is in him all the time, always for everything that we have need of. All the time, no matter where we are, what situation we find ourselves in, the answer to that dilemma, whatever, that sin, test, trial, struggle, that opposition, the answer to victory is found in the blood of Calvary, the blood sacrifice, Christ and him crucified. But verse 28, but, you, but where are your gods? Amen. Where are they? Just like those that danced on the, leaped on the altar on Carmel and and cut themselves with latches. No one heard, no one saw, no one rushed to their rescue. It did not move anyone, and it certainly will not move God. The only thing that will move God, if you want to move of God in your life, move over to Calvary. Move to the cross by faith. Cling to the cross. Allow the Holy Spirit uh, to do his perfect work and draw you to the Calvary. Amen. And you'll find a move of God there. You'll find God moving and working. You'll find the operation of God. You'll find God doing what we need done in our life. And it's really all wrapped up uh, in, in Jesus because he is our source. He is our supply. Everything that we have need of is in him. And the cross through faith is the means whereby we're able to receive all that he is. Amen. The uh, Jehovah of the old is the, is, the, is the Christ of the new. And the old he was referred to is El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. He was referred to as Jehovah Jireh, which means our provider. Amen. And he began providing at that place to us, Christ in him crucified. Amen. That place is where Christ was crucified is uh, Jehovah Jireh. Amen. But it says in verse 29, it says, wherefore, will you plead? Will you, will you uh, contend? Uh, excuse me. Will you, wherefore, will you plead? Uh, that's speaking God saying, will you plead uh, and, and debate with me? Are you, do, and, uh, are you contending against me? Uh, wherefore, will you plead with me, debate with me, contend with me? And in essence, yes, in actuality, that's what the people, when they're turning from the exclusive message of the cross and trying to defend other things, other routes, and in, in a broad way, I still can't get it out of my mind how I heard one great so-called popular cross preacher say that we, we no longer believe that the narrow way is as narrow as it was in the beginning when we came in. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. The, 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 that narrow way is just as narrow as it's always been. 
Amen. Man is making it wider and broader for the sake of this, uh, of uh, worshiping their idol and filling the house, packing the pews. Amen. The, the important thing is not packing the pews. The important thing is what are you, uh, what are you pouring into the people that are seated there, whether it be two or three. The important thing is what are you, uh, what are you feeding the people? Amen. What, what is, what is that which is important to you? Is it packing the house and filling the pews and bringing in all the money? Or is it equipping that few that's clinging to the cross to be able to stand and endure and overcome and persevere and be fully equipped and fully furnished, amen, to stand in the hour in which we presently live in the days ahead as we see deception grow greater and greater. The Bible says that men will wax worse and worse, being deceived, going about deceiving others. Amen. The only safe place is clinging to that cross where the power of God beats back all of the powers of the enemy. Amen. That's where our hope, our help, that's where our, that's our refuge. Amen. That's the high tower where God lifts me up above everything that desires to devour me and consume me. My only help is in Christ and what he did at Calvary. My hope is, is in nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. All, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. And, when, and everything is beginning to shake and it's going to shake more. There's troubles right around the bend, far worse than we presently see. When this trouble begins to shake, amen, the only thing that's going to be left standing, amen, is those that are standing upon that pierced rock. Amen. Everything else is going to fail. Everything else is going to sink. Everything else is going to crumble around them. He said in verse 30, in vain have I, back to verse 29, wherefore will you uh, contend against me, debate with me? You, you all have transgressed against me. There is that transgression. Love rejoices not in transgression. Love rejoices not in a departure from the faith. Amen. Love rejoices in the truth. That's where the love of God always resides. It resides in the truth. Amen. The lamb slain even before the foundation of the world. Christ crucified. The cross has always been in the mind and the heart of God in Christ and the Holy Spirit said, uh, he said, you have transgressed against me. Amen. And listen to the note. The question is being asked, wherefore will you plead with me? Refers to Judah's audacity and attempting to justify herself. And, and, and sadly, we see the church doing the very thing. They, they justify in me. And, and those that are watching this, you know what I'm talking about. And you say, you know some of the things before I even say it. But those that, are, uh, that have turned a, a deaf ear and a blinded eye, it's time for you, the Lord, for you to hear the alarm sound and for you to open up your ears and your eyes to see and hear what's really going on around and within the, the, the church camp and the body of Christ in this final hour of the church age. They, they attempt to justify themselves all the time. They're, they're departing from the faith, amen. Those that are the leaving the faith, amen, when, when we were born and when we, when we found pleading for people to come back to Calvary, those are the ones that scream the loudest, trying to, the whole time they're drowning in deception, the whole time they're drowning in their departure from the faith, amen, but they scream the loudest, trying to justify their sinking into that net of deception. So we see Judah doing the same thing here, amen. We see them uh, screaming and justifying and, 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 and trying to justify uh, their many idols and, and many gods and the reason for it. 
Let us not be found among these, amen, today. Let us be found contending, earnestly contending for the faith. Let us be st found standing at Calvary. Let us be found standing in the, the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Let us continue in the faith, Colossians 1 and 23, amen, to be established there, amen, rooted and grounded in the faith and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. If Judah can be moved away, amen, the, the, the church today certainly can be moved away, amen. It's our responsibility to be found embracing this truth, examining our heart, and be sure that we are standing in the faith, lest we bow, be found reprobate, which speaks a, a, a casting away and a departure of the faith and, and, and actually uh, being cast out into eternal darkness and apart from God. We don't want to find ourselves there, amen. Amen. This is a good fight that we're in, amen? To, let's be sure that we finish this course, that we fight this good fight of faith. Let's be uh, earnestly contending for this faith all the way to the end, amen? Uh, I wish I could get a little bit further along, but I, I have to remind you, remember the words of the apostle Paul over uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15, he said, and this you know, Timothy, this you know, that all they which are in Asia have turned away from me. This means that there was a huge number, even all of Asia, who were once greatly influenced by the Apostle Paul, but now they are led astray by the influence of seducers and deceivers. And we think, how can, can this happen? And I've already asked that question. We we think, uh, how, how can this be? How can this happen? How can Judah be led astray uh, when, when they experience the, the great work of God in their lives? How can the body of Christ be led astray when we have experienced the, 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 the miracle uh, of the cross and God's redeeming work and his victorious work in our life. How can it happen? But it does happen. And Paul bore witness that there was a, a huge number that left him uh, in Asia, which means they left his influence. They left his preaching. And his, you know what his preaching was? Amen. In 1 Corinthians 2, 1 and 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 and 5, amen, how he, he preached Christ and him crucified, determined to know nothing else, that the faith of the people stand not in the wisdom of God, but in the power, excuse me, in the wisdom, their faith stand not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God, which is all wrapped up in, in the cross, amen. But the, the thing is, those people that left Paul, amen, just like with Judah, they just went on about their way, amen, claiming an inheritance, claiming the blessings, uh, but it was, it, was, it was all a fallacy. Uh, but with those that left the apostle Paul, you rest assured, they were still gathering. They were still assembling. They were still having uh, what they would f refer to as church services. There would be a large gatherings and no doubt the most popular preachers of that day stood in line to tickle the ears of the people. But they were all falling into a great net of deception, just like Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 through 4. Or there'll be those that will not be able to endure the truth. I mean, they were in the truth, they could not endure it. And they would heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They desired to, to, to gather a large number of people, preachers that would tickle their ear and make them feel good in their rebellion against God. Amen. And we need to take heed to these things. The 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 uh, the, the warnings of Jeremiah, what we hear Paul preach and teach and warn. Amen. We need to take heed to these things. For we be in the days of even greater deception. Amen. Yes, indeed. 
Verse 30 says, In vain have I smitten your children. They have received no correction. Your own sword has devoured your prophets like a like a destroying lion. Amen. And, and, and before I go any further, amen, Before while it's on the tip of my tongue, we have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, amen, the, the, the word of God, Jesus would say, it said, you killed my prophets. You killed the ones that I sent to you. Amen. You, you rejected, even Jeremiah, he would be rejected. He would be mocked. He would even be uh, killed. He would be, uh, he would be uh, rock stoning him. He would be totally rejected even, but he was speaking, amen, as an oracle and a voice for the Lord. He was speaking, amen, for God to the people that God loved and desired to, for, for them to have them, amen, but they had to turn from their wicked ways. They had to turn from their transgression, amen. They had to come back to God in his way and believe him and trust in him wholly without embracing all of these other idols and, and other gods, amen. You, the, 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 the mindset that is, well, you know, with the modern day church, you know, well, you know, one little old golden cow over here in the corner, surely just one little old golden calf over here in the corner, we'll just set that preacher over to the side. Amen. We, you know, we want, we want to make buddies and pals with him because he can help us pack the house. He can help us fill the pews. He can help us fill the offering place. So you see the the the, the thrust and energy uh, of, of ministry today has shifted from uh, the, 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 the death blow of the cross, which you the only place you can find victory and eternal life has shifted to packing the house and, and filling the offering place. It's a love, amen, and a greed for the, for the money. Just one little old calf over here in the corner, one little old golden calf, one little, one little, one little old idol. Amen. It won't hurt nothing. But let me tell you something. You begin to harbor. You begin to. You begin to uh, to uh, uh, uphold, and you begin to allow one little old golden calf graze in your pasture. And the next thing you know, you're gonna have a whole herd. They're all gonna come flocking. Amen. They're all gonna come holding hands. They're all gonna promise great things. And, and this is exactly where Judah was at in this time. Amen. And it says, by your own sword, you devoured your prophets. And said, God said, they're your prophets, meaning I sent them to you for you. Mm, you did it like a destroying lion. And the note says, Judah, despite their chastisements, would not be corrected. Instead, they killed the very ones your prophet sent to warn them. Amen. You know, the chastening of the Lord is not God's. God's not trying to des destroy anyone. The Bible says God chastens those that he loves. The correction, uh, the voice of Jeremiah, the voice of the Apostle Paul, amen, the, the voice of the ones that God has raised up in this final hour to, to attempt to bring the church back to the cross, amen. That's, that's the love of God. Uh, at work. That's the love of God in this final hour. Amen. To turn the people back to Calvary, to come back to the first love, to uh, to to separate from all of the strange women, the adultery, the seduction that they have embraced, to, to turn from all of that and come back to Calvary and to the cross and their first love. God has raised these up. He, you can know those that God has raised up because their voice is going to be clear. Their voice is going to be sure. Their their voice is going to uh, to speak the exclusive message of the cross without any mixture, without any leaven, amen. And and but they're going to, but just as that minister de despises every false way and every idol, amen. That ministry is going to be despised as well, just as all of those in Asia despised the Apostle Paul because of his steadfastness in the faith. He was clear in his speech. He, 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 
He made no favor toward men. He made no favor uh, toward the the desires of the people. He only spoke as an ambassador of Christ and spoke only the desires and the will and the purpose and the plan of God for the people, which is to embrace the cross and to take it up daily, just as Jesus said. Amen. And it's, you know, he mentioned in vain, have I, I smitten your children and, and I'm, I think about, you know, the, you know, during that day and time, there were those that would offer, Israel was doing this, they would offer their, they would offer their children upon an idol called Molech or Moloch. Amen. And it was just a huge, a horrible thing, altar where the, the children uh, would be placed upon the arms of Molech and they would be literally burned with fire it was him a sacrifice, and, and I think about, I think about that today. I think about the church does not realize that a departure of this faith, they're literally offering their children in a future generation that should there be one out in front of us, they're literally offering the, the children in the next generation up on the on Molech to be consumed in the fires of God's judgment because they have turned away from the true God to embrace their own desires in, in, in a, in a so-called gospel of their own making where they, where they embrace all of these buddies and piles. And Judah was doing the same thing. They wanted to have an allegiance and a relationship with uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, uh, other nations. Even they wanted a, even a relationship established with Egypt, and they wanted to be buddies and pals with all the nations around them. And they wanted to accomplish that. Uh, th- th- through the mindset of love, embracing just embracing everyone. But God would not accept it, amen. God desired people to be apart from the the ways of the world. God desires still even a people to be uh, established in this truth and be willing to separate, amen, the the uh, uh, the popular message today and, and it's being thrown up in our face, love and grace, love and grace, unity and peace. And, uh, the when the focus, the earmarks of this false unity message, the earmarks is always love and grace. But it's not the love of God. Amen. It's not the grace of God. Colossians 1 and 6 says the grace of God in truth. When you embrace that, you know it and embrace it. Amen. There bring forth, there will be brought forth fruit. And that fruit is always going to be a manifestation of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're always delivered. 2 Corinthians 4 and 11. We're always delivered to the cross, to death. Amen. We're always delivered to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Christ, that great victory that resides within him but was dispersed and, and made available through the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're always delivered unto death, delivered unto the cross so that the life, the victorious life of Christ might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. That's right now. And you can have it every day. Amen. If you're turned from the distractors and the seducers, amen, and the doctrines of devils that's being brought into the church in this final hour in a great way, just as Judah had many altars and many gods, but it was all self-serving and God wasn't in it, amen. We're offering up their children. We're offering up the children upon the arms of Moloch. We're offering up the next generation for a self-serving message and to pet our idols. Verse 31. The Lord said, O generation, see ye the word of the Lord. Have I, have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore, say, I, God is saying, I've not, I've not been the wilderness. I've not been the darkness. 
These things are coming upon you because of who you are and your rejections of my inheritance that, I, that I've offered you. you. These things are coming upon you because of who you are, not because of who I am. God, it goes on to say, the people would say, is it, is it this, I don't even know how to relate to it. They said, we are lords. Well, listen to what it says there in verse 31. They said, we are lords. We are all gods. What we do is, is we, we make them to ourselves gods. We are lords. We lord over the land. We, uh, we are lords. We will come no more unto you. <laughs> we will come no more unto you. We, we, we will come no more and embrace the exclusive message of the cross. We will come no more and call the gospel a narrow way. We will come no more and lock arms with those that are preaching uh, this determination. We'll come no more and be a part of these things. We, we, we say that you're uh, hateful. We say that you're unloving. We say that you're condemning. That's what they would say. That's what they do say. We have, we've made our gods. And we, we have our unity. We have our peace. We have our grace. We have our love. We've made unto ourselves our own gods. We will come no more unto you. We'll come no more to, to the cross. We'll come no more to God's way. Troubles have got right around the bend, ladies and gentlemen. For these, those that have rejected God's way. It says in verse 32, can a, can a maid forget her? This is God speaking once again to Judah. Can a maid forget her ornaments or bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. You see, it was, as the note says, it was, it was completely contrary to the nature for Judah to forget God, but yet they have. It was contrary for Judah to forget God but they have. And we think, how in the world could that apply today? Well, you would think it's contrary that the cross-preaching camp, the cross-preaching church that came in on this great revelation of the cross is, is contrary to our, our mind and our thoughts that they would forsake this message, but yet they have. You see the parallel? You see how it's being repeated again, yet it's being justified by the very ones that, that are leaving the message. I think about what Paul said in, in, in connection with verse 20, 32. Paul said in Hebrews chapter 2 in verse 1, Therefore, amen, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Notice Paul included himself when he said we. Let me read it again, Hebrews 2 and 1. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. The church will, just like they did with Jeremiah, they just brush him off. They just saw him as a spectacle. He was just an interference with the, the ways of Judah and their embracing of their gods. He was just and interference in, in the, the ones that God has raised up in this final hour. The, the church is hostile toward them just like they was toward J J Jeremiah. He was mocked and belittled and cursed. And yet we see the same thing today. The church has become hostile 
toward those who are determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and have crucified the, the body has become hostile, amen, toward the exclusive message of the cross and those that refuse to bend and, and twist their message and distort it to go the way of what is popular in this final hour. They refuse to, to twist the word and to, and, to, and to make it into something else and pervert it in order to pack the house and bring in the money. That person is, is the, the, the body is hostile and, and despised. They despise that man that is standing for the truth in this final hour. Paul said in Hebrews 2 and 1, 2 and 1, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Speaking of this gospel, amen, that this old country preacher is speaking to you today, we, you ought to give it a more earnest heed and not brush it off. Don't just turn it off. Don't just sweep it under the carpet. Don't just go on about pretending. I, I, I see some of you, you know, you're just tiptoeing through the tulips and, and just pretending that everything is all right. Turn turning a blind eye to the truth, turning a deaf ear to the warnings, just like Judah did. Just like Judah did. Just like all of those in Asia who turned from the Apostle Paul so that they could go about having religious services as they would care to have them without all of that warning, without all of that cross, without death to self. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Once again, bringing attention, Paul included himself, the very one who was given the great revelation of the message of the cross. He included himself. Let us give heed. Let us give a more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Not take it lightly. Let us not handle the message of the cross. Let us not handle it like a, a ring that we wear loosely on our finger. Let us not handle it loosely, lest it slip. That's what Paul is saying. Lest it slip from our very grip. No, not Judah, not even Paul was exempt from turning from God's only way to handle God's way loosely and letting it slip. Let us take heed, amen. Praise God. Paul sent, for this very reason, Paul sent a strong message to the, to the churches in Galatia. And actually, if you look closely, you'll see this strong warning in every epistle to the Corinth and to, as they were found slipping away in, in Colossae and in Philippi, Thessalonica, all of Paul's epistles, amen, the majority of what was written was a strong warning to the body of Christ to not to not let this gospel slip, but to hold it and to grip it, amen, and to lay claim to it and, and stand in this liberty, amen, wherewith Christ has made you free and be not entangled again in the very yoke of bondage, amen. This cross, this message of the cross has delivered this old country preacher from a great yoke of bondage, religious bondage. God forbid that I would allow some uh, weak-legged preacher to, to try to lure me back into what God greatly delivered me from. Hallelujah. Some 20 years ago, God forbid, I refused to retreat. Hallelujah. God just sent another good dose of the, the Holy Ghost. God, hallelujah, and help us to continue to march on in this great liberating truth where we're, where we're delivered from the very wiles of the devil all of his schemes and strategies, everything that the enemy would use against us, amen, we've been delivered from it at Calvary's cross. God forbid that we would turn around and go back now. No, let us be found marching on. Hallelujah, let us be found persevering. Let us be found enduring. Let us be found marching on all the way to the very end. Glory to the Lamb of God. Lift your hands and give him praise. 
in the house of God today, wherever you're seated in the presence of Almighty God, that is the house of God. We're in the house of God when we find ourselves set down with Jesus in heavenly places. Glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. Paul sent a strong message to the Galatians in, in, in chapter 1 and verse 8 and said, but though we, there Paul included himself again. He said, but though we, speaking of Paul and his associates, you know, the, uh, these so-called associates that we see so many of that are allowed to, to continue to preach, they identify with the with uh, those connections that uh, they can benefit from, but yet they continue to preach something else. These associates, these are so-called associates, <laughs> need to sit down. They don't need to be given a microphone and given a platform. They need to sit down. But it says here, but though we, Paul and his associates, those that traveled with him, those that ministered with him, those that, that understood Paul's way. He said, but though we, and his way was the cross, but though we are an angel from heaven, he said, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, which is Christ crucified, 1 Corinthians 1 and 23. We preach Christ crucified. It hasn't changed. Amen. The, the, uh, the, the gospel in Jeremiah's day, amen, was the sacrifice. Amen. The gospel in Paul's day was the sacrifice. The gospel today was, is the sacrifice. The lamb slain, Christ and him crucified. That is where God works. That is where you'll find victory. That's the redeeming place. Hallelujah. That's the fruit bearing place. That's the place of provision. Amen. Amen. Uh, Romans 8 and, and 32 tells us, uh, amen, how shall God not with him, speaking of Christ and him crucified, look at it closely. How shall God not with him, Christ crucified, also give us all things freely. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything that we have need of. Amen. For life and godliness is wrapped up in what Jesus did at Calvary. God forbid that we would be moved away from that but it's going to take some determination on your part, child of God, because there's a huge segment of the body out there that's doing everything uh, that they can through the, uh, the, the the seducing spirits and the leading of, of, of Satan to try to move you away and flesh helping every step of the way, looking for a, 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 an, an easier route than the crucifixion of the cross. Don't succumb to it. It's a good fight when you remain when you remain in this truth, glory to God. But he said, even if an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, which is Christ in him crucified, let it be let him be accursed. That means to be eternally condemned. Amen. So the Holy Spirit here and today even with Jeremiah through this man of God, the Holy Spirit, God was speaking plainly. God was speaking pointedly. God was speaking strongly through the Apostle Paul here. Amen. So that we who are led of the Holy Spirit, he is our example. Amen. The Apostle Paul, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. He is our New Testament example. Amen. Of life and living. Amen. We can have this same gospel. We can have this same faith. We can have this same energy. We can have this same grace that Paul had. It's not, uh, he, it's not just unto him, but it's all to all those who are willing, amen, to follow a good fight. So we, we who are led of the Holy Spirit should speak without fear or favor toward men as well. Amen. God's made it available to you. Amen. You don't have to whimper down or you don't have to uh, you don't have to cower back. Amen. In this time when the, when the world needs to see 
amen, a church that's not fearful. Amen. The world needs to see and hear a a preacher and a minister and a and a and a, and a, and a ministry that's not fearful. Amen. To to speak the truth and stand flat footed while doing so. Praise God. My prayer every day, Lord, keep my hands welded to the gospel plow. Let me not even look back, much less turn back. Amen. I'm not worthy of the gospel if I do such. But weld my hands to the gospel plow. Let us plow forward. Even when we find ourselves on hard ground, and that plow may bounce around a little bit, but help me, God, by your grace to keep my hands held to that gospel plow. Keep forging forward. Keep preaching this, this message that's, that's an exclusive message so that those that are willing to hear can hear hear and be saved and be redeemed and don't let us be found among those that are drawing back unto perdition. Amen. Let us be found among God's remnant. Amen. That that are believing unto the saving of the soul all the way to the end. Praise God. And like the Apostle Paul, it makes no difference if all of those over yonder, wherever over yonder he is, wherever he is, it makes no difference as if they all hate me. Amen. It didn't stop the Apostle Paul. Amen. He continued to be determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Let us be found in that camp. Glory to God. You can call it what you want to. You can call it the cross camp. Amen. But if you allow an eleven, if you allow a mixture to come in and every creeper and every pervert to, if you're handing it to every creeper and pervert that comes along. Amen. You're not in God's cross camp. You're in something that you've made up in your own mind. Amen. And your effort is to try to defend the direction that you're going in by making that true determined minister. Amen. And being hostile toward him and trying to tear him down. And you're actually attempting to destroy him. You silence him by destroying his character and his ministry. You need to repent. And come back to God's way. Amen. And come back to the true, true cross camp. And that are those that are gathered around Calvary. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. First Timothy 4 and 1. I know I'm over time. I'm always <laughs> running into overtime. Praise God. First Timothy 4 and 1. Amen. The Holy Spirit speaks expressly. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. These seducing spirits, they, they work through men. These doctrines of devils were brought in by men, brought in by creepers. They're brought in by those that's mentioned in Acts chapter 20 and verse 30. Even of your own selves shall men arise. Speaking perverse things, perverted things, to draw away disciples after them. When everything begins to shake and is shaking already, these will be the ones that will fall. These will be the ones that are, it will fall by the wayside. Be sure you're standing upon that solid rock. Amen. And I, I was headed. I wanted to go all the way to uh, the end of chapter 2, but I was uh, especially headed to that uh, uh, scripture there in verse 34. It says, also in your skirts, Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 34, also in your skirts is found the blood of the souls. This is God speaking. In other words, it's not something hidden. hidden. It's plainly seen. God says, I see upon you the, the blood of the innocent. I, all, in your skirts is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocent. And he says, I have not found it by a secret search, but upon all these, in other words, just as the note says, it's visible and a search is not needed. Amen. The things that I speak of this morning, a search is not needed. 
Amen. It's visible. It's plain. It's plainly seen to those who allowed the cross to be their instrument of discerning and not what some other preacher has said. Not the wisdom of men, but the cross is our instrument of discerning. If the cross is your instrument of discerning, you should be able to plainly see what's going on around you. Ladies and gentlemen, things I say is not something that's been made up. It's not retaliation. It's none of that. It's none of the things that many people are saying. I'm not jealous because of anyone. It's none of that. It's these things are plainly seen. The effort of this pastor and a few today, amen, is attempting to try to, to, try to get the people to awaken from their sleep and awaken from their slumber and come back to a place of vigilance, turn from that wicked direction, turn from the gods that they have raised up. Ministers and ministries is who they are. God of filling the house with people, filling the plates, instead of filling the people with the truth and seeing to it that they're thoroughly furnished Amen. To stand against the wiles of the devil in this final hour. If not, the blood of the simple will be required upon of your hand. Amen. Paul said, I've, I've withheld. He said it there in Acts chapter 20. In verse 26, he said, Wherefore I take to you record this day, I am pure from the blood of all men. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us be found. Warning of the days ahead. Warning the church, the body. Warning the people to come back to Calvary because this, this day in present, that we presently live is drawing to a close. It's drawing to a close today is the day of salvation. That means today is the day of repentance. Now is the appointed day. God has appointed this broadcast, this day, this time for you to hear. Those that are unwilling to show up, today is the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. Don't put another dime into that plate. Don't put another sent into that plate. Don't listen to a single message that comes from those that are embracing all of these that God has told us to turn, turn from. Quit trying to turn what God has cursed into a blessing. Praise God. Amen. Thank the Lord for this message today. I pray to God that you've been challenged, convicted, encouraged, uplifted, all of these things and so much more. Amen. God is speaking. God is reaching. God is warning. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope to see you tomorrow night for the Continue for the Faith broadcast. We'll be coming to you live right here on Facebook again, 630 We'll be gathering at Crossway Ministries. Amen. It's not a camp. What I, when I say these things, it's not a campaign to get people to come to our church. It's a campaign for the gospel. Amen. What you need to see, what you need to hear, what you need to know, what you need to walk in, the exclusive message of the cross. Doors will be open. Come on in. Fellowship, join us right there in the sanctuary of Crossway Ministries. But if you're not able to drive in, log on. Join us right here at 6.30. I'll be joining uh, Brother James Wilcott, Brother Jonathan Melton, and you can rest assured you're going to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in this final hour. Amen. God bless you. Love you, each and every one.